please remember to share your screen. Yes, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I will share my screen now. It's really good to see everybody here this morning. I'm so sorry to hear about these floods that are have happening in Africa. And it, actually, I was thinking earlier today how, you know, every little, you know, that Brother Branham said that Everything that is expressed over here is, is is an expression of the opposite in heaven. So when you see a tree that dies over here, there's an expression in in another place where there's a tree that doesn't die. And if you see a counterfeit dollar over here, that means there's a real dollar. And this negative only shows that somewhere there's a positive. And I was thinking today because my allergies sometimes really bother me. And I was thinking about what Brother Branham, you know, said when he he lost his favorite chair, I think, at one time. And he said, well, maybe I'll have one in, in heaven or something like that. I Maybe I'm not saying it right, but I just, and then, well, like he, he lost a hair on his head, you know, and he said, I haven't lost one of them. And so all the signs here is just the negative of there's something greater to express and manifest in the positive. And so... I'm so thankful that even though we have a whole bunch of negative things that happen upon the face of the earth, it, it just presses us in to keep on expressing the eternal and expressing the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ and faith in him. And, and it, it expresses uh, the attributes of the supernatural. It expresses the attributes of a different world. And so I'm looking, it just helps us. It helps us to look forward to what we're going to receive when we drop this flesh and when all this, you know, natural expression is over. We're going to fully express and manifest the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, I mean, we are expressing that now. We're, we're going um, to we're gonna witness the fullness of what it was like in the Garden of Eden, you know, and because Brother Branham said that uh, everything, whatever Adam lost, Jesus Christ gained back for us. And so we can experience that now. And so I just was thinking about this 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 morning about pressing through unto expression and manifestation. And sometimes there's a lot of things that we have to go through to express, you know. Um, there's, there has to be that negative in place so that we can express uh, something different than the negative, which is the positive, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the revelation, which is the word made flesh, which is this, the seals opened up and the trumpets revealed and all these things. And so it's a beautiful thing to be able to have the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ being here now to express all that he is. But sometimes it takes a lot. Like Brother Branham said, the new birth, it's its a mess, you know. The new birth is a mess. Sometimes you have to go through a lot to, to but, when, but when the baby comes into the world, then it's beautiful. And that's just like with the real, true believer, Christian, predestinated to express the word of the hour. It's a beautiful thing when they come into that full expression, a manifestation of faith, to believe all the word of God and to express his attributes. And so it's beautiful. So... I'd like to open up this um, <clears throat> message today with Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There's no other calling that you could have that is greater than uh, a calling in the Lord Jesus Christ. You could have an earthly calling to express some things that are earthly, but the greatest calling we can have is to express the Lord Jesus Christ in his word. And Jesus Christ is his word, and his word is present. His life is present. And when you believe in it, it's going to express. Amen. It's going to manifest. Let us, therefore, as many be perfect. Well, the only way we can be perfect is to have that perfect one within you, and the only way you could have that perfect one was in the, within you is to accept the perfect word which has come forth for this day. Amen. But let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. 
have the same mind. This There's another scripture that says, this same mind that was in Christ, let it be in you. Amen. So that way you have his thinking. It's a spiritual way of thinking. It's a spiritual way of understanding. And if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this even unto you. If you have a natural mind, God, be it known unto you that God wants you to have his mind, his spirit, his word, his life. And he wants you to express everything that he is. Amen. And brothers and sister, as long as down in my heart, through the black clouds of torment, no matter what you're facing on this earth, no matter what kind of trials and troubles you have, if you can once in a while just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, press through once in a while and give me a blessing. I know that the power of God still lives and reigns somewhere. Amen. And I, I've learned over time, out of all this time that I've been a Christian, there's been times where I haven't felt the presence of God. And just, th just I, th I think, well, where is it? And all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, when you're least expecting it, he comes and he manifests himself. And, and, and you just press through and believe no matter what. And so it gives you the kind of faith and the kind of patience that God wants you to have. And it's a beautiful thing was it when his presence comes around and it, it helps you. It, it sees you through, brothers and sisters. And it's not just an emotion. It's more than emotion because we don't rely on emotion. We don't say, well, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, believe anymore because I don't have a certain emotion. You believe out of faith. Faith goes beyond motion. Faith comes from the soul. Faith comes from the heart. Amen. And it's a blessing. And then I know the power of God that he still lives and reigns somewhere. That's right. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. He said, if I could ask the morning star, what makes you shine up there? Why are you shining? He would say, it's not me that's shining, Brother Branham. If the star could speak, it's only the sun that's shining on me that's making me shine. Well, now what is shining is the Lord Jesus Christ within you that comes forward and expresses itself on the outward and and he is um he is glorified through his people and it's making me the it's the the holy spirit is what makes us shine the life within us amen and that's the way it is with every man that's a believer in Christ Jesus that's hidden hidden in him it's not you shining it's the holy spirit shining on you that gives you this hope and the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Do you know what happens when you are feel his presence and and when you know his word and when you know he's alive and when you you know he's real and it becomes a manifestation of his resurrection. That's his life being resurrected in you out of dark denominationalism. Amen. Out of your old ways of thinking, out of your old creeds, out of your old dogmas. Amen. It's a living word. I used to say about speaking down here in Old Spring I used to drink from. It was bubbling and jumping and jumping around Milltown. I used to wonder why the spring jumped. So one day I sat down there and was talking to it. Imagine that, talking to a spring. But I was talking to nature who made the spring. And I wondered, what makes you so bubbly and jumpy? It's because that, is it because the children come here and drink from you or I drink from you or something? If the spring could have spoke back, he would have said, no, Billy, it isn't because you drink from it. It isn't because anybody drinks from it. It's something down beneath me here, pushing me and making me bubble and jump and carry on like this. Amen. That's why I'm here this morning is because there's something within me that wants to express the word and the life and the spirit of God to show that he's here so that people can come to a relationship with him and come to know that he's alive. Amen. That's the way every man or woman that's born of the spirit of God. It's not you. It's not a human emotion. It's because that there's a resurrection or power of God in it that 
human life and it's pressing up into everlasting life, moving into eternal life. Something in you here. You could not hold your peace if you had to. There's something within you. Amen. Once in a while, I feel the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and I just have to express it. It takes over your emotion. It takes over your being. It takes over your mouth. It takes over your actions and you begin to want to express everything he is. Amen. And when Jesus came walking into Jerusalem and they cut down palms and they begin to scream and cry and carry on like that, some of those old starchy Pharisees made them hold their peace. Why? They give us the shivers. How many people are screaming and carrying on? That's right. Religious people don't want that. They don't want the expression or manifestation of God sometimes. They want to just express their intellect and express their coldness and formality. And they don't think that God's real and God's alive and God's here. <clears throat> They're just looking to a dead manifestation, not the live one. Amen. But he said, if they hold their peace, the rocks will immediately cry out. Amen. God can use anything he wants to, to express himself. But the way he loves to express himself the most is through his believers that had taken for what he has said, and then his life expresses through them, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. When life comes am comes amongst death, there is a resurrection. Amen. It doesn't matter how long you've been in dead into a dogma, a creed, or religion. When life comes amongst death, there is a resurrection. There's bound to be. The predestinated seed will come to a point in their life where they will fully express the resurrection, the life of Christ among them, in them, around them, through them. Amen. And I think, friends, that when we fail, is our, our faith fails to believe that we take him as something way off somewhere else when he's right here with us with us. Amen. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, if he expressed himself in the form of a human being when he walked the earth in Jesus Christ, if he expressed himself in the form of a human being when he walked in Moses, if he expressed himself in the form of a human being when he was in Paul, he's also going to express himself in his offspring once again in this last day through the wife of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's just as real in this room tonight as this light is. That they were trying to, Brother Branham was trying to say, look, Jesus Christ is here right now. If you have faith to believe and if you can receive it. He, was, he wasn't trying to point to his flesh body, but he was saying that he was here. In, in those people who believe. Amen. It's just as real in this room tonight as the light is. Darkness can't come into this room as long as the light's here. Amen. And I say, as long as the light is in the wife of the Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what you're facing, there, the light is more powerful than the darkness. Amen. No matter how dark it is outside, it'll never get so dark, but what this light overcomes the darkness. Amen. Is that right? No matter how much dark tries to press it through the window, as long as there's lights here, light is more powerful than darkness. And that light is in the believer. Amen. And when faith comes in, no matter how much unbelief stands around, um, the light is greater than the darkness. The light prevails over the darkness. And I believe God is just as real in this room tonight as that light is, as the light on my hand and just as close to me as the light on my hands. Amen. He knew that the presence of God was with him. He knew the light was with him. And he recognized that presence. And when we recognize the presence of God, there's nothing he can't do to help you. Amen. If we see him in his earthly ministry, he went about, he didn't claim to be a great person and no minister in their right mind that's operating the under the right motive and right objective and right spirit. They're not going to be claimed to be a great person because that the only way that they know that they can be great is because of the great spirit within you, the Lord Jesus Christ to express himself. It doesn't have anything to do with the flesh. It has to do with the faith of the believer, how much they express the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. Amen. He didn't claim to be a healer. Amen. I hear homo, I hear so much slam that the devil gives upon people who pray for the sick, call them divine healers. Well, we, when a, 
Well, because a man preaches divine healer, that doesn't make him a divine healer. If it does, the man who preaches salvation makes him a divine savior. No, that's not the case. What would you think it would be nice to call a preacher, there's my divine savior going there? Well, certainly you wouldn't want to do that. That's that's just a scripture... That's just a scripture as saying, there goes a divine healer. No, that's not the case. It has nothing to do with the flesh. It's the spirit that makes the difference. A man preaching divine healing, that doesn't make him a healer. No more than it makes a man a savior. But so many people today are worshiping the creature more than the creator, realizing that it's the creator that gave his life for you. Amen. A minister can't save you. He can tell you the word. And point you to Christ. And Christ and, <clears throat> and Christ can't save you when he's already done it. He saved you 1900 years ago. You just have to accept it. That's what we have to do. That's what people are doing. Is they're accepting it. So that they could press through to the manifestation. And the expression of the Lord Jesus Christ being here now. Amen. It's the living word for our day. Well, a man can't heal you. He can only point you to Christ who healed you 1900 years ago when he died. Amen. It's a finished work. Hallelujah. All we have to do is accept what he has already done. Amen. If the Holy Spirit, if Jesus Christ proves that he's here among us, then press till you get to him. Amen. This little woman with the blood issue and all these different things that had taken place and all the adversaries in her way she just pressed right on through till she touched him amen i like that no matter what a christian faces they know that they don't have to be bound by the chain of circumstances that are around them they can just still keep on pressing through until they see the manifestation and the expression of the lord jesus christ being here being alive in through you, through me, and everybody he is going to call. Those people who are predestinated. If this church tonight would do the same thing, he would press through every scale of unbelief and would lock swords with the devil and his unbelief and press through to know that you're a child of God and an heir to these things and Jesus Christ standing present to show that he's with you, to keep his word. Be perseverant. Amen. An another part of this whole message is being perseverant. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It doesn't matter what the circumstances is. If you be still and you stand in your place and you know that God is real, no matter how long it takes and no matter what situations you may be faced with, God is going to prevail. Amen. Don't let nothing stand in your way. I'm just wondering if faith really anchors. Could anything stand in your way? No. You don't get it. If you really got it, that would settle it. If you really had faith and you really believe, you wouldn't need to go through a prayer line. You wouldn't need to try to change any circumstance on the face of the earth. You know that the circumstance has already been changed in your heart. And the source of faith is within your heart. It comes from the soul. It comes from the life of God. Amen. When a man keeps what God says to do, if you, what is it? The Bible said it says perfect obedience to the word of God entitles you to the token. What is the token? The token is the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? It's the life of God. Where is it now? It's here now. When a man keeps what God said to do, and he is certain he is God, he's got to answer. Amen. Faith calls him on the scene every time. If there's faith, uh, unbelief cannot call him on the scene. It's faith that calls him on the scene every single time. It's somebody that is going to take him at his word and believe it with all their heart, despite everything. When you've done what you know is right, when you met his requirements, when you've confessed and you made right, and you've done restitution and laid it before God, I don't care how silent he may seem to be. I don't care how silent he is. He is still God waiting to put his faith there. Amen. You've done your works. Now he wants to see your faith by your works. Amen. He wants to see what you're going to do about it. This is a testing ground. Amen. If you've been anointed and you've been prayed for, God is waiting to see what you're going to believe about it. Not run up next Sunday and run the next day and then the next Sometimes until the next healer comes through the city, he's waiting to see your reaction 
on your faith. Amen. And sometimes he gets you to a point in your life where there's nothing else you can rely on but him for him to have you press through and express and manifest that faith when everything against faith is there. Amen. Not walk back the next day and say, I feel so bad. I guess I didn't get healed. No, he wants, remember, he's the high priest of our confession and profession. If you say some things like that, that you're not, that you're not, I guess I'm not healed, or you make a negative statement like that, you're not fit for the prayer line in the first place. You're not. Amen. You're not ready. You don't believe that he is God. Amen. But when you do, do believe that he is God, present tense, and you know he's here, and you're relying on him, and you're trusting in him, what does the Bible say? He that trusts in him shall not be ashamed. Amen. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all them that believe. For there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be appropriation through faith in his blood. That's faith in his life. Amen. To declare his righteousness, not our own righteousness, because our own righteousness is as filthy rags, but his righteousness that's through faith. That's what he's looking for. For the remission of the sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. You want to be justified? Believe in him. You want to be sanctified? Believe in him. You have the Holy Ghost? Believe that those, those people who believe in him. Amen. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, by the law of faith. Everything happens by faith. It causes us to press through. It causes us to express. It causes us to manifest everything that he is. Amen. And the woman, as she seen those that crucial hour that was coming, no doubt she checked up and said, Lord, I've known that you, I've done all that I know how to do. When you've done everything that you know how to do and you met God's you met every requirement that God has required. That's where faith takes a hold. That's where faith comes in. You've met every requirement that God required you to do. And then sometime God's test your faith to see what kind of a reaction that you are going to have on your action. He's good at that. Amen. He just let it prove whether you really believe what you think you believe. It's a testing ground. Amen. He, He's going to test you to see whether you really, where you can put your money where your mouth is. Amen. You know that he does that many times. Take unto you the whole armor of God, not just a part of it, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Well, this is certainly an evil day. And I certainly hope that every single believer listening this morning has taken on the whole armor of God, that they can withstand in the evil day. And that whole armor of God all comes through faith in believing God is here and he's alive and his word is real. That's the day we're living in. And having done all to stand, you can't stand on man's doctrine. You can't stand on man's interpretation. You can't stand on an emotion. You have to stand on the word of God. Amen. When you've done all you can do, then stand. Don't move. Don't, don't doubt in your heart. Hold your peace. I'm going to show you something. When you've done exactly what he said do, it seems like it went wrong. Still, stand, be patient, know that he is God, wait upon the Lord, you shall renew your strength. Amen. When you are pressing through with determination, something's got to happen. Stand with faith. Faith masters all circumstances. Faith masters the circumstances of time. Faith masters the circumstances of what you're facing. Faith will master what the doctor's order said. Amen. Faith masters all circumstances. He provides a way. Don't let nothing hinder your faith. He's already defeated the enemy. He already paid the price for your sickness. He's already proven that he is real. He's already proven that his promises are real. They're for you if you can receive it. Joshua and Caleb, they were determined to see God, to express and manifest his promise to be true for the day. Go over the, I've given you the land, he said. They wanted God to express that his Promise was true, and they needed to have the faith to do it, and they did. Amen. 
No matter how big the giants in the land were, they were determined to see that fruit and see it come to light what God had promised them. Amen. And taking the promised land despite the giants in the land, their faith was real. They knew God was with them. It couldn't do anything else but happen. One foot in front of the other, they moved forward with faith. I don't care if it's a small step, even if you take a small step of faith, just move forward. Don't ever go back. Amen. God doesn't change his mind about his word. God doesn't change his mind about his promises. He's just the same today as he was then. God is determined to do something. He's going to do it and nothing's going to stop him from doing it. God has the power to transform. Amen. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. To believe that he's here. And then when you press forward, he's going to express and manifest himself through you. For we are his expression. Amen. That's which was what was from the beginning, which you have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. Praise God. What did, what did Jesus say? When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And now in this last day, Brother Branham said, she is him. When you've seen the believer that takes God at his word, you've seen the Father. Amen. You can handle the word of life because the word of life is here. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life. What is he showing? He's showing eternal life. What is eternal? His word's eternal. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never fail. And show to you that eternal life which was in the Father and which was manifested unto us. Amen. But if there's something about it, when you want to see Jesus real bad, you'll do anything. You'll press through no matter what. Just like the woman who wanted to see, just like... Zacchaeus, amen, those people who really wanted to see him, there's nothing that's going to stop you from seeing it. You'll just do anything. You'll do anything if you want to see him real bad. And sometimes he provides these situations and circumstances to, to get you to a point where you press in to desire to see him move. And he does it, but it's in his time. Amen. It, so he gets out there and you see Satan is going to try to keep you from doing it too. That's right. Satan... You couldn't be enjoy what it is to be a victory unless Satan was there for you to try to hinder you so that you could overcome it. Amen. He's going to try to put anything in your way every single time to keep you from seeing him. He'll blind your eyes with anything that you can. But if you're determined, if you believe he's here, if you believe the word, if you believe he's alive, he'll make a way for you. Amen. He is passing this way this morning, too. Don't let Satan put something in your way this time and I say, I got to do this. Just be still a minute. Be still and know that he is God and he's going to produce. His word does not come back void. And when you speak his word and you believe his word, it's not going to come back void. It's going to produce life. It's going to produce a manifestation and it's going to produce a appearance of God. Amen. He that committeth sin is of the devil. The de devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. He did it when he was in the flesh body of Jesus, and now he's doing it through the current manifestation of the Son of God. He's still destroying the works of the devil through the wife of the Lord Jesus Christ, speaking his word with the revelation that they have, has been given to them, and, and the gates of that revelation, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. All right. Now, the supernatural is what blinds men. That's right. People are looking so much to the natural that they don't see the supernatural by faith. But the supernatural is what blinds men. It has in all ages. But isn't it marvelous to think when the supernatural is demonstrated, that's where the eagles are, or the carcass rather, the eagles will be gathered. Where will the eagles be gathered? The eagles will be gathered around the word, the manifested word for their day. Amen. That's the carcass. That's the, that's the true word of God. The manifested word for their day. They're going to be gathered around that because they are one with that word. Through the age it has been made that way. Men and walk in the slumber of life and they hear the teaching and their philosophy and so forth and that their theologies, but still that doesn't satisfy the human heart. Amen. 
You can't press through with something that's a man-made philosophy. You can't press through with a man-made teaching. You can't press through with somebody's education. You press through and manifest the word of God and express his word by the manifested word of the hour, the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ being here. Otherwise, you can't be satisfied with something like that. That's why when I, when I was younger and I went to all these different churches, I was never satisfied. I said, there's got to be more. And one day, God showed me the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it, I was satisfied, but I still wanted more. And that's the thing. You got to keep moving forward. Amen. When the supernatural comes into view, like it did in the days of our Lord Jesus Christ, after their fine priests and so forth that they had, their scholars and their philosophies, when Jesus came on the scene with the power and manifestation of God, the people flocked to hear him because it's something in the realms of the beyond. And all men, knowing that soon, all the education they got, all the theology they got and so forth will rot in the grave with him. That's right. No matter what you've obtained on this earth, the only thing that's going to you're going to take with you is your character. And the only thing that you're going to take with you is the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the natural things, don't put your emphasis on that. Because all of it's going to fall, uh, pass away. But the only thing that will remain is his word and his life. We know that. But where the supernatural is, it pierces beyond the grave. Amen. People look. And most of the time, if they're critical and they're not open up in their heart... They'll pass some opinion on it like they did in that day and say, oh, there's nothing to it. It's He's a Beelzebub. He's a devil. He casts out devils by a devil. And he knows those things and he sees them. Yeah, Beelzebub shows him. They have the wrong idea. And it's like that. They will pass it on. But some do believe in him, but it'll be few. And all those who believe will be saved. Those who believe could get healed. But if Jesus himself was standing wearing my suit and shoes, he could not help you any more tonight than he was in the form that he used 2,000 years ago. You know why? Because you had to believe. He could help you if you believe. When you believe, there's nothing that's going to stop you. When you believe that he's here, amen. But it takes somebody to believe that he's here now to to help them. Amen. The Bible said, and there's a place where many mighty works could he not do because of their unbelief. Amen. So check yourself and see, are we really believing? Are we really believing that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Are we believing that he's on the scene? When some blind men follow him, he touched their eyes and he said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Amen. It's according to your faith. How much do you want to receive of the Lord? It's according to how much faith you believe that he can provide for you. Amen. Here it is in Galatians 1.8. But though are we an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, you, gospel to you than what we have already preached unto you, let him be accursed. It was the apostles who brought the original word to the people. That original word could not change, not even a dot or a dash of it. Paul knew that it was God that had spoken to him. So he, even, he said, even if I try to give you a second revelation, try to make one little change in what I have given you already originally, let him be a curse. You see, Paul knew that the first revelation was correct. And God can't give another a first revelation and then get a second revelation. If he did, it would be changing his mind. He gave a revelation um, he can give a revelation then add to it as he did in the Garden of Eden when he promised the seed to the woman and though later designated that seed had come through Abraham and then later it said it would come by the same bloodlines of David. You see, it's just adding to that same revelation and increasing your understanding on that same revelation, but it's not a different revelation. Amen. Brother Branham said, uh, I'll just keep on going on here. But it was the same revelation. It could give, only gave the people more information to help them receive and understand it. Brother Branham said in a different message, the wife of Christ will be saying the same thing that the prophet said. Amen. The word, the spirit, and the bride will be saying the same thing. But God's word can't change. The seed came exactly as revealed. Hallelujah. And see what those false apostles were doing they came with their own word 
Those Ephesians knew that word as Paul had taught it, but they were full of the Holy Ghost by the laying on of Paul's hands. They looked at those false apostles in the eye and said, you're not saying what Paul said. You are therefore false. Oh, that sets my heart on fire. Get back to the word. It's not you that really tries the apostle and the prophet and the teacher. It's the word that tries them. The word is what judges. Amen. You don't judge, but it's the word that judges. One of these days, there's going to be a prophet to the Lady Ocean Church Age, and we had him. The fulfillment of Malachi 4, 5, and 6 in Revelations 10, 7. And you will know if he's the real one sent of God or not. Yes, you will, for he is of God and he will be in that word exactly as God gave it to Paul. He won't deviate from that word for a moment, not by one iota. In the last age, when there will be many false prophets appearing, watch and see how they keep telling you that if you don't believe them in what they say, you will be lost. But when this last day prophet comes on the scene, if he is truly that prophet, he will be crying out, get back to the word or you are lost. He won't build on a private revelation or interpretation, but on the word. Amen and amen. These false apostles are the grievous wolves that Paul spoke of. Once I am gone, they will try to come in and claim equal revelation. Amen. I see that today. They're trying to say that they have equal or more revelation than what the prophet has been given. Don't follow them. But their purpose is not to help you, but to destroy you. Acts twenty twenty seven through 32. I have not shunned to declare unto you the counsel of God. Therefore, take heed unto yourself and unto the, all the flock, which is over, which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God. Amen. That's what we're doing by speaking the word of the day. We're feeding the church of God. We're feeding the eagles with the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ being here now. Amen. The same yesterday, today, and forever. But he said, For I know this, after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse thing, their own word and ideas, and not God's, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everybody by night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend unto you God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Praise God. King David pressed through. No matter how the big armies of the Philistines looked, no matter how big they were, he still pressed through until he saw the manifestation and the expression of God. He didn't look at how big they were. He didn't look at how much training they had. He looked to the promise of God for the day. He had a righteous anger toward anybody that would defy the armies of the living God. He pressed through and saw the manifestation of God. God through him was able to defeat the Philistine. No matter what big giants you have in your own life, God is able to deliver you. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrew children, they pressed through until they saw the manifestation of God. They probably felt the presence of God around them. They knew that they were obedient to his word. They knew that they believed the promise. It didn't matter how hot the furnace was. By their obedience, they probably felt the presence of God around them and that they knew that they were there. He knew that he was there and he showed up on the scene at the time they needed him to. And God can show up on the scene at the time that you need him to, according to your faith. Amen. God around them. He knew he was there and he was alive. No one, and he knew that he could deliver them. There was no circumstance that could hold them. The God was there. It didn't matter how hot the furnace was. It didn't matter because Faith masters all circumstances. God was there and he proved it. He showed the unbelievers that he was there by the fourth person in the furnace. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Daniel was able to defeat the lions in the lion's den. It didn't matter how hungry they, the lions might have been. It didn't matter how large the lions were. It didn't matter that may, they had seen him eat other people before. This one was different. God had a plan. And God's got a plan for you too. For Daniel to press through and believe his word. And God manifested himself, that he was with him. Amen. In Proverbs sixteen seven, it says, When a man's ways please him, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies 
to be at peace with him. I've seen that in my own life. Whenever I know that I've pleased the Lord, people who maybe were once angry, he caused them to be at peace with me. Amen. So when your ways please the Lord, if God can, is for you, who could be against you? Amen. God caused the lions to be at peace with Daniel. He pleased the Lord because of his faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And his word, because of faith in his promises, there was no one, there was no stopping God from causing his servant to press through by faith and see the manifestation and expression of the Lord. God is more than able to do it in any situations. If the atomic bombs were to fall right now, would you be ready? Could you, could you honestly say that your faith would be ready to take you into that other dimension? You have to be ready because you don't know when it's going to happen. Let your faith rise and see the manifestation of God in your own life. Keep pressing forward no matter what the circumstances are. Keep pressing by forward in faith in his word and in his promises. What happened, Brother Branham said, your faith, just like that blind beggar, he called him on the scene. Can you call God on the scene for your needs? Amen. Do you believe it? There's no need for a healing line when you have that kind of faith. How many believes that you're healed? Anyhow, amen. Raise your hand. Praise him. You are healed. Jesus Christ is in our midst. The same one who walked through Jericho. Isn't that amazing to think that the same God that walked through Jericho causing the 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 walls of Jericho to fall is the same God that's here now? Amen. The same one that knew Zacchaeus by name. The same one that knew blind Bartimaeus. The same Lord Jesus Christ in the form of the Holy Spirit is here tonight doing the same thing. He's here now doing the same thing infallibly proving that he's the same yesterday today and forever don't let creeds and theologies and cold spells choke you out you're in the presence of the lord jesus christ who is able to accomplish all that which he has said he's able to do above what he has said what you ask him to do he is the one that's made manifest among you i believe it with all my heart he wasn't only the word but he was god himself the dynamics in the word that made the body of jesus christ the body of Jesus Christ was cold, stiff, dead in the grave, but he was shaken to life again and rose again. And your life can be shaken and rolled and raised again. And it has, if you believe it. And he rolled away the stone and he said, I was he that was dead, dead till the sun said he was dead. Moon, the moon said he was dead. The stars said he was dead. All nature said he was dead. And now the whole world has to recognize that he's alive again. He's not only the mechanics, God's word, but he was the dynamics, the Holy Spirit, to prove it. And the same Holy Spirit is here now in the life of his believers to prove that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as he being the groom, the bride has to come forth because it's a part of him. It can only be the manifestation of the fulfilling of all the other revelations any others have spoke of the bride. It can only manifest. If it does something different from the groom, it isn't the bride because she is flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone, power of his power. Amen. She is him. As a man and a woman are one, and woman taken from his side, she had taken a spirit, the feminine spirit from him, the flesh from his side, made both mechanics and dynamics, the wife. Praise God. Aren't you glad that you're both mechanics and dynamics, the word and the spirit? The spirit of him and the flesh of him, and put it together, made mechanics and dynamics until the church of the people express everything that he is. Amen. So we are really shadows of the light, more than the shadows of the light. Amen. Now you're reflecting a life from somewhere. If you are a Christian and being the shadow, it can only prove that there's a life somewhere where you cannot die. Amen. Because this life has death in it. This physical life has death. But if you were with him before the foundation of the world, the person that you really are on the inside, you can't die. Amen. But it's a shadow because you're living a moving creature with abilities to see, think, move, and talk, the five senses of the body, but yet you know that they're dying, and there's so much trouble. You can know it's a reflection. You see that there's a physical life and death mixed together. Amen. The physical life has to die. That which came from the earth goes back to the earth, but if there's a predestinated seed within you, that which came from God goes back to God. So don't worry about what anything can happen to this flesh body. 
because you have eternal life. Amen. The light from heaven. You are reflecting the eternal life. Then when you die, you can no more than go to that light. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you happy that you that we are the light, that his light lives within us? Aren't you happy that you have given us, that God has given us the ability to express every one of his attributes when you press on and believe with all your heart that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, that he's here, that you can press through to the manifestation and expression of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ? It's a wonderful thing, brothers and sisters. I love it. I feel his presence now. I feel that he's working among us. I feel that there's nothing that he can't do as long as you believe. He's here to make his promises real, to make it alive, to make him the same yesterday, today, and forever. No matter what you're facing, brothers and sisters, he can. He is more than able to meet your needs. All you do is you wait on him. You believe it and you walk. Just walk. Just keep walking. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Just keep on serving him. To wait means to serve. Amen. We serve others by serving them the words of life. Amen. We serve others by reflecting his image. We are the image of God. Praise God, brothers and sisters. I feel good. God bless you. I hope it was a blessing unto you. I will now turn the service after, over to Brother Joshua. I hope he's still with us. And let's continue to stay in prayer about the brothers who are facing hardships because of the floods over there in Africa. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, Brother Joshua. Thank you, brother. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for this moment. We thank you for the refreshing of the word. We thank you for giving us strength. We thank you for giving us the courage that in this day where we are the expression of your word, your spirit living in us, Lord, us depending on you for our sustenance, yes. us depending on you for our all livelihood. You said that, Father, dear Lord, today will be the very images of the living God. And that's what exactly the bride is, Father. We thank you for this message. Pray that you may bless the minister of the word. Uplift him, God. Give him the strength that, Father, he will continue to be of help to the body of the believers. I continue to pray for our brothers who may be suffering as a result of flooding various parts of Kenya and Nairobi. Father, you know the needs of their hearts. I pray that, Father, you're going to be with them from where they are. And, dear Lord, uplift them and bring them out of the current situation, O oh God. I pray for the situation of power at my place. Dear Lord, yes, Lord Jesus. may you bring the responders in yes, good time. Father. That, Father, we may get back to normalcy. We thank you, Lord, for all things. We thank you for the mean, for the brave believers who have joined us today. Yes, Jesus. I want to commit each and every one of them to you, O oh God. Dear Lord, you know the needs and the desire of their hearts. Dear Lord, may you bless them. Dear Lord, may you uplift them. May you give them the faith that they need to stand, Father, dear Lord, for this word. As they go, may they, con may they walk with your name. As they walk, may they prophesy your name. For that is what has been given for us. That, dear Lord, when they see us living to the standards of that word, they will say that indeed there is a God in this age. Yes, Lord Jesus. You give them, Father, dear Lord, your strength. Give them your grace. And that, Father, dear Lord, may they be, may they find joy in being message believers of this day. Until we meet on Saturday, Lord, we give all thanks to you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you, brothers. Recording stopped. Thank you, Brother Brian.